Good morning or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So my topic would be about prostate cancer, and we know that prostate cancer is still a major issue. And I think that we, in comparison to breast imaging, we are still like 20 years before with where we are right now with breast imaging. Cancer, prostate cancer is not a benign disease, and um, unfortunately in the population it has a kind of complex uh, um, appearance and complex uh, uh, information where we don't know if PSA is truly uh, uh, um, a very nice tool or not. And we see that uh, despite the major increase in the technical uh, detection issues, um, we still have a, a growing uh, a mortality rate. Uh, as I said, we are dealing with diagnostic tests of uh, limited performance, and uh, this is including PSA, uh, transrectal ultrasound, or even MRI and biopsy. So um, there is clearly room for improvement in prostate imaging. PSA, we know that the, uh, uh, it has a non-specific elevation, the normal dosage is around 4 nanograms per milliliter, but we know that we have almost 20% of significant prostate cancer below 4 nanograms per milliliter. We know also that transrectal ultrasound, the conventional transrectal B mode, has a limited sensitivity in between 30 to 50% for the detection of prostate cancer. And that's why we have that rule that normal transrectal ultrasound examination should not delay prostate biopsies if abnormal digital rectal examination or PSA values are found. Multiparametric uh, MRI is now the uh, uh, almost reference tool for the diagnosis of uh, prostate uh, cancer, at least for targeting uh, or finding the targets. Uh, it's clearly a major tool, and it's also improving the staging uh, in case of significant prostate cancer. But uh, uh, it despite its high detection rate and high negative predictive values, but you see that there's quite a wide range. If you look at the uh, published paper, the, sense, the specificity and the accuracy remain pretty low. It has also additional limitation, including cost, availability, tolerance, and biopsy guidance. Just having a look to this uh, graph, you see that uh, when the uh, lesion diameter is below one uh, um, centimeter, we are missing almost 70% uh, uh, of the lesions. And when the glisten score is below uh, seven, you see that we are also missing almost 70% uh, of the lesions. So uh, prostate biopsy remained the uh, reference for the diagnosis of prostate cancer and also to provide the grade of the cancer. And this is through the uh, glisten score. And we do systematic peripheral zone biopsy with various protocols. And we do also additional biopsy targeted to any kind of abnormality detected at MRI or ultrasound. But despite that, we know that the false negative rate remains quite high, or around 20%. So really, uh, I think there's a door opening now for real-time she wave elastography. And uh, uh, this technique, as you can see here, allows uh, evaluation of the stiffness of the uh, prostate during transrectal ultrasound with the same producer. So basically, just you set up the appropriate scale, and the standard scale that we use is 70 kilopascal. We just scan the prostate in the transverse plane, avoiding any pressure on the transducer. We wait until stabilization of the signals, and then we move to the next plane, and so we can cover the entire prostate in uh, about one minute. Um, uh, in the past, we had a, a small uh, region of interest, elastography box. Right now, we have a, a much bigger one that can cover the uh, entire prostate in the transverse plane. And this is clearly helpful when we try to compare the right peripheral zone to the left one. And we store the uh, digital cine loop so that we can review and compare with the B-mode findings. 
So basically, the normal appearances of peripheral zone homogeneously encoded in blue colors with the uh, soft tissues. And this is very clear, as you can see here, the peripheral zone is really uh, below uh, 30 kilopascals. And in case of BPH, you see the much stiffer appearance of the transition zone. Of course, we know that in case of calcification, these will appear like uh, stiffer areas. Um, yeah, the, uh, so this is the typical pattern of the prostate cancer. So uh, you could see, maybe you could see it on the B mode, uh, and, and sometimes we don't see anything wrong on the B mode, and we had these popping uh, stiff colors uh, during she wave elastography. We see much better the extension of the lesion, and so um, in case of stable signal like in this one, you can say that it is highly suspicious and that you, can, uh, you should direct uh, biopsy to these areas. The reproducibility of this technique is really excellent, and you see the numbers provided from uh, this paper in uh, clinical imaging. So uh, the performance of this technique has been evaluated uh, prior to random or targeted biopsies, and we also uh, performed a study uh, you, uh, in uh, 184 men um, uh, evaluating this technique, we found that the uh, uh, prostate cancer is a stiff uh, area, and you see values around 41 kilopascals. You see that this is stiffer from the normal adjacent peripheral zone, that is around 20 kilopascals, and the benign lesion that look uh, like a round, rounded uh, shape has an intermediate stiffness. And you see also that we can perform elasticity ratio comparing the lesion to the adjacent uh, uh, normal peripheral zone so that uh, we can take into account the natural uh, stiffness of the normal uh, tissue of the prostate. And basically, these are the numbers that we found with the high sensitivity and high specific specificity values per sextant and per patient in identification of prostate cancer. Clearly, this technique approved uh, the detection of prostate cancer. And we also found, despite the slow, low number of uh, prostate cancers, uh, a kind of trend with the increased stiffness values in patients with uh, uh, the Gleason score. So, uh, however, we have uh, still uh, some uh, limitation, including pressure artifact, and we know that we should not be pushing on the transducer, some limited penetration when there is a large uh, benign uh, prostate, prostate hypertrophy, and also the flow, slow frame rate is about one image per second. Uh, in the past, as I said, we had a, a limited uh, uh, covering um, uh, region of interest, and you know now that we can work with a much larger one, so that's clearly a, a very nice improvement and we should wait always until stabilization of the signals. But please remember that not all cancers will be stiff, and all stiff lesions are not cancers. So um, basically, we're just trying to improve the targeting and identification of, uh, of the lesions inside the prostate. So just a few examples from our uh, uh, real life. This is a patient coming with a moderately elevated PSA, no previous ultrasound examination, normal digital rectal examination. The prostate is around 41 grams. And so clearly there is a, a lesion that is hypervascular and maybe uh, slightly uh, hypoechogenic. So clearly then you, we, you apply uh, um, she wave elastography. This is just a button to push and you avoid any pressure, and then you see immediately where is this stiff and abnormal area. But what is really interesting is that you can detect even abnormal uh, stiffness values around the lesion, and that's a feature that we know pretty well, and it's very similar in the breast imaging. And so we can also target biopsy to these uh, stiffer areas, because we do think that the stiffer is the, uh, the area, the higher will be the grade. We can also use contrast-enhanced ultrasound and look at this impressive uh, enhancement at the level of the uh, uh, tumor, and then we can also target the uh, biopsy to this uh, hypervascular area. So basically, uh, this was the uh, um, MRI finding, very similar to uh, the uh, um, image uh, that we found with the uh, ultrasound and she wave, and also the correlation with the biopsy of a Gleason 7 cancer. 
So, but in some cases, the PSA is uh, uh, just slightly abnormal and stable. The MR is not possible. The normal, there's a normal digital rectal examination, and there's a previous ultrasound examination that said there's, there's no suspicious area, and in this case, you didn't see any suspicious area. So the B mode is normal, the Doppler is normal, but uh, you start at the base, and, and then, then there's something wrong here, and then you just measure the stiffness values, and you see very high stiffness values, around 70 kilopascals. And you look at the B-mode, and there's really nothing clearly abnormal. But uh, uh, then you can even use contrast when you're not sure and you want to improve the detection of the lesion and look at the contrast enhancement on this anterior uh, uh, central zone uh, adenocarcinoma. And that was confirmed to be a, a glisten 8 lesion that was completely missed with the previous examinations. And interestingly is that none of the systematic biopsies found any, any, any foci of cancer. So really it's, it's not a complex issue, and I think that we, we are able now using this technology to improve the detection of the prostate cancers. But now we have the ability to combine this information with the 3D acquisition. So we can do 3D B-mold acquisition, and then we can reconstruct uh, all the multiparametric reformats and have all the planes available. But this is true with B-mold, but this is also true with the she-wave elastography. And these are the coronal planes, the transverse planes, and sagittal planes. And we are just now opening the door to a new vision of the prostate cancer, and we are able to much better assess the extension of the lesion in all planes. So just a, a case of a patient with a, a PSA around 9 a nanogram per milliliter, a lesion that is seen on B-mode. But just remember that B-mode is not so specific. This is the lesion that we saw. We are now able to reconstruct the lesion and look at it on the several plane, the transverse plane, but also the coronal plane. And you see that the lesion is much more extending than was um, uh, previously evaluated. We can do that also with color Doppler and with a high, very high sensitivity and do also the reformats on the coronal planes. This is the acquisition with the uh, um, she-wave elastography. And this is at the mid part, and you see much stiffer values here, around 48 kilopascals. And at the end, you can um, uh, scan the entire prostate, review, for example, your acquisition on she web elastography, and find that the lesion was really extending from the base to the mid part of the, the prostate. And uh, uh, again, all biopsies came back, uh, uh, and this is the... Uh, strongly enhancing area. You look at the asymmetry with the contralateral uh, peripheral zone. And uh, uh, you can also process the data in uh, uh, some software to uh, obtain functional information about uh, this enhancement. And finally, it was a glisten 7 left lobe extending in the tire. And uh, interestingly is that the MRI was really underestimating the lesion uh, just seeing at the mid part of uh, the prostate. And the last case will be a, a patient with a really elevated uh, PSA value, uh, a slightly abnormal uh, peripheral zone on the right side, and, uh, and this is the measurement of the lesion. You see 0.5 milliliter, so it's quite small lesion. You see that with the Doppler, it has abnormal, uh, some abnormal color uh, signals. And then look, the lesion is not exactly where we thought, very peripheral. It was much more extending in the interior part and we did the uh, reformats in all planes and did the biopsy. And finally, the lesion was much more interior than what is expected and going down. And that was very interesting because sometimes the she wave information is not matching the B mode information. And this is pretty true. And this was a glisten 7 cancer that was truly underestimated also with the MRI. So finally, ultrasound elastography is feasible now on the 2D and 3D uh, volumes. And the 3D approach is improving the workflow uh, in, and it is uh, capable now to extend to she wave elastography. It's capable of assessing prostate lesions in all planes. And I think this is a clearly a major improvement. And to evaluate lesion extension much better than before. 
Um, my dream, uh, as we can have all dreams, is to be able to fuse the 3D volume acquisition with the Xi wave with the 3D volumes from multi-parametric MRI. And this is really opening the door to focal therapy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Correas. Do we have any question? Yes. <laughs> No, right now we're not focusing on subtype of uh, cancers. What we truly found is that the uh, stiffer is the lesion, the more aggressive it is, and clearly the higher glycine score we'll find. I have another question for, for you. Um, you. You've been an early adopter of, of all these techniques, and, uh, uh, and I know that you've uh, tried to educate others uh, to these techniques. What is today the learning curve to be able to perform a show of elastography of the prostate? Well, the learning curve uh, uh, is uh, uh, really short um, in... Uh, um, you know, in, in radiologist uh, practicing uh, transrectal ultrasound. Um, and the key point is really not to apply any pressure on the transduce. And that's not easy when the prostate is really big and protruding inside the rectum. Uh, so that's the key point, is really being able to take the time scan very slowly from the base to the apex and just look at the lesion and don't push on the, uh, on, on the transducer. And if you see any stiff area, just, just release any kind of pressure that you have on the transducer, and then the image will come back to uh, uh, softer values if there's no lesion. Thank you very much.